Good morning shrimp farm. Uh, today I'm going to feed the shrimp. Um, I've already been in here and checked the if we're dead shrimp. My, my tanks are in actually very very good condition actually. The, um, any shrimp deaths I've had have seemed to have dissipated. I am still having the odd one or two but when you have 20 plus tanks uh, you are going to get the odd shrimp death. Um, so today I'm going to feed the shrimp uh, we're going to try new food. Um, I'm also uh, testing some of the tanks where I do get the odd dead shrimp still, right? So this was one of them. I actually, uh, in my last video, you would have saw that I filmed probably three or four days ago. You would have heard me say I still get the odd shrimp death in here. Uh, the shrimp themselves are very, very active. And it is just the odd shrimp, right? So this could be... It could be like a... Uh, a legacy issue where uh, something's not been quite right before and it's still lingering a little bit in some of the older shrimp that we put in uh, because I've actually put more shrimp in this tank since last week uh, we have a lot of the galaxy culls in here now I think I put in like 20 galaxy culls uh, we had a mama in here from the German spotted head pinto she went in here as well she's a big big girl that's buried and she's still fine so yeah I have a feeling that is just a legacy issue because today is all also as well guys I've uh, been testing for ammonia nitrite and nitrate and uh, one of the tests is actually done here now I'm looking at this maybe a teeny bit green which is not that bad considering I actually have peat pellets in there as well it's probably yellow if I hold this up to the the light like the way that you're meant to do get the light underneath you yeah it is yellow well, it's maybe a little bit green get the get the light like this very hard to tell i would say it's closer to the second green so there is a tiny tiny amount of ammonia i think either that or the test is wrong uh, because i normally uh, test or change up my my test kits at least once a year right and that one up there hasn't been done for at least a year and a half uh, because they can go quite uh, inaccurate right so let's get some food is that the dead shrimp? no I thought this was a dead shrimp there for a second see this white thing whatever that is let's try some new food right so today on the menu is some let me see where did I put some glass garden shrimp dinner I thought I would uh, start buying different foods and testing them on screen just so you guys can see what different foods are like as well because I, I mean I don't just use my own food as well I know it looks like I do for my own videos but I don't I use other foods as well so today we're going to try a glass garden shrimp dinner let me see if I can get in in the camera there you go shrimp dinner uh, let's open it up I'll put you here just for a second let's see what one is this let me see. So we're gonna have a little look at the form of the food as well. Seems to be in little I don't know, it's almost like unbroken strips, you see it? Whenever these can be broken easy. Maybe not. Oh yeah there that's quite tough, right? So that I would if this would have been awesome if you could break those little uh, little segments. You see it's like in three segments if you could break them up probably can but not with my fingers yeah so let's get some of this food no, I'm not gonna eat it let's get some of this food into the tanks and we'll see what it is like right glass garden shrimp dinner num num let's grab a few bits here because I don't need to uh, look at stuff all the time We'll give these guys a full bit for Ope, Ope Ule. I might actually just pull this at the weight. Oh, yeah. Down you go. Uh, I should really wear a chest rig or something when I'm doing this stuff. <laughs> I actually do have a chest rig as well. I'm just like the ultimate lazy mother effer. And so this tank is doing good now. I actually removed a lot of the horn water in here because I'm thinking like the Amazon sword and stuff. 
uh, won't grow quite as big as if we have something that's very dominant like a uh, plant like a hornwort in the bark. In the bark. This is Valin. What's it called, guys? Valinera. Well, jungle fowl, basically. Um, people were saying, right? I was saying that this was meant to be an Amazon sword. But guys, let me know in the comment section below, do you get ones that are like different types of Amazon sword? Because this one seems to be staying relatively small, hasn't really done much. Let's get some food in here. Some food in here. Some food in here. What I'm noticing guys as well is the ferts are working nicely with the uh, tanks that still have um, something in the soil like this is just it's just not working at all but this one's starting to go the same you see it's starting to brown on the top yeah we'll see we'll see we might actually have to re redo this tank specifically as well let's get you back up there of course you're not going to stick very well yeah we'll see in a minute and guys today into the shrimp room we'll uh, I'll actually cut it We'll have a break for, I don't know, 15 minutes, then we'll come back and have a look at the shrimp because um, I don't think that's a great test to show you the shrimp's reaction straight away because you you guys know what it's like. There, I mean, this tank is big, there's like, I don't know, 100 plus shrimp in here or something. Let's get our food in. Uh, it's not a very good test. Oh, right in the rim of the dish. It's not a very good test um, if we measure it straight away. Got a few molts in here yesterday. I topped up this tank with the uh, fresh RO water. I'm not going to put a whole bit in here guys because there's not so many shrimp in this tank. I don't notice the crays today have... Uh, I don't know, this looks like they're aquascaping or something. The Savasa tongue and the whatever I put in here, any um, vegetable matter has been eaten away quite a lot. I can see that the, th the thing that we had to do last week, cleaning the filters, we're actually going to need to do it again already. Right, so my filters are getting blocked up pretty fast with these cray crays in here, so I'll have to fix that today. It's a pain in the butt because I literally did it like three days ago, so we're going to have to look into another idea for filtering this Let's get some food in here. There you go. You see there guys, there was a little super crystal red on the hornwort in this tank. Somehow, because I was pretty sure I rinsed it pretty well in the tank before I moved it over here. And it's doing fine, it's almost an adult. So that was straight going in, straight dunking in. All right, let's see into the galaxy tank. I'm gonna do something with uh, my lights. That's why my, my light is back down on the tank because uh, I just hate the way it looks. So I'm trying to brainstorm for ideas for lights. This part here is quite small. Let's put you into this tank here. See how many more do we have? Maybe four, something like that. Four tanks. Four tanks. Uh, what has happened with the duckweed here? This tank was uh, overgrown with duckweed. Look at that pump at the back. The sponge. I actually cleaned this tank the other day, guys. And see when you get enough air like this going through a sponge filter. It cleans the tank really, 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 really well. Some shrimp dinner in there. Shrimp dinner, is there any small bits here? Because there's only like 10 shrimp in this tank. Let me see, come on. Alright. Let's have a little quicker look here because... Uh, these cherry shrimp are having a lot of babies in here. You can see them all in the moss, you guys could probably just see them a bit go up and down you. you know, apart from that mega glare. 
Uh, so let's see. Um, what we could do is, I'm pretty confident that this uh, ammonia reading is uh, accurate. If there is an ammonia reading, it's very, very slight. What we do, guys, is I want to test for nitrate as well. I know I dose nitrogen, but I just want to see maybe I'm dosing too much. But the deaths in this tank uh, that we had before were before the dosing as well, so you know, it's like I'm trying to put the lid on this with one hand. Yep, we definitely need to get a camera crew in here. So let's see. Coffee in hand. Oh, the thing I was doing, guys, with uh, this, look, uh, my routine with the water changes. Let me just quickly change this because I went to, down to one. I think one is enough fert wise. I think I'm going a little bit overboard with my ferts. Uh, could be why the moss is melting as well, right? So, I'm gonna go to one mil fert, one scoop of water, uh, one mil of nitrogen per 50 litres of water. That will be perfect, I think, right? So, let's get our little ammonia test here. Let's, uh, let me put you doing actually, guys. I'm going to just clean this. I'm going to actually going to clean it and rinse it with tap water, guys. And because I don't want any of the old tests in here. Where's my little test tube scrubber? I mean, these these are no, by no means perfect for like cleaning stuff. The things like this are actually dishwasher safe. So if you have a dishwasher. Please do put them in the dishwasher, right? So this is uh, clean enough, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to go with some uh, tank water, just give it a little shake like this. And then we're going to take our test amount. Now you would have seen from the last video as well, the best way to do this is just to drip it with your finger. Like this, and it might take you two or three times to do it. See, it's almost perfect first time. One more. One more. You basically want a drip to come out. Isn't that good? One more, maybe. Oh, good enough. We're on the line. Right, so, I'm using this uh, holder all the time guys because um, I've done it like this before and not used the holder I spilt the test hmm. alright let me see we're going to test in nitrates nitrates sorry where's my nitrates let me see white range pH nitrate is it I think is it just the one R5 yeah it's just the one right, where's the test card nitrate test card Fresh and salt water, this is where you can see I have, uh, I bought lots of different ones before. Wide range pH, phosphate. Let's see, I just want to check phosphates here because, now this is bottle 2. Uh, so th this is part of a kit that I've obviously split up before. Um, let me see here, because I just noticed their expiry date, 11th through 3. So th this is what I'm saying with the expiry dates. Make sure your tests are in. Uh, ND. Right, so this one's the 10th, 2021. So it's got a little while yet before it's out of date. Guys, and it is worth actually replacing these because they do go off. Salt water nitrate, what did it do with a nitrate card there? Nitrate. Crash on salt water nitrate. Possibly. So here we oh well that's salt water. Fresh and salt water. That's a bit odd. Is this actually for this test? I think it is. Five minutes. We'll see if it's not, we'll get the wrong colour. <laughs> right, so what do we need here? These are meant to be uh, easy to use. We're just gonna give this a little shake. Uh, with one hand. Thanks are looking good actually. 
looking very good. So I've actually been a little bit more diligent with my uh, mosses and splitting up my busa. I think next, guys, I'm going to actually split up some more moss because I actually quite like this moss here. I think it's something that's maybe erect moss because it likes to grow straight up. Um, the moss at the back here that you can see, I'm just going to write this off as being dead. It can't, there's no other way I can explain it why it's never grown or... But this moss is fine. Here. This moss is fine. I can see other bits of moss in the tank that are fine as well. So I'm going to write this off as probably being dead or something. Uh, because look at this as well. Look. If you can look past all of the galaxies here, all the lovely blue galaxies, look at the moss here. Moss has grown fine, but it is on a little bit of lava rock. So that is probably something I'm going to try and do this week. I'm going to split up um, some of this. I think it's a red moss. Guys, let me know in the comment section as well, because it seems to grow straight up and bend over just a little bit on the ends. Because I want to split this up a little bit. So this one's probably going to be the one that I split up just because it's on the gravel, it's not grown very nice. You get the gist right. So these things here are meant to be easy to open with one hand. Let's see. You put your thumb on the red bit and you turn it on to go. Oh, it actually did first time. Look at that. I'm just going to drop you over here. Right, and this one is five drips. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Five, let's get the lid back on. So this is not too bad, it's quite easy to do. These little bottles are well made uh, for doing stuff with one hand. Lid back on. I'm going to give this a gentle sway back and forward like this. One, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Right, and then we're going to leave it to sit. Just off the bar it is blue blue. So um, that's a good sign as well. That's a good sign. Uh, the other things guys that I probably um, will look into as well is making sure things like my um, active carbon pre-filter and my sediment filter and my reverse osmosis units are, are working because it could be the problem as well uh, where you um, maybe, maybe we don't replace them enough I can't remember, let's have a little look did I date these ones? I think I did these this year and uh, maybe I didn't date them either see that's a bad mistake there bad bad mistake right so yeah lesson learned that was where I got lazy or I either I just forgot but I actually have them ordered already again uh, because what I'm noticing up here is with my reverse osmosis water it is about 10 10 uh, parts per million TDS and it's uh, maybe 20 micro siemens so it's, it is climbing it is climbing but I, I think I put these in here at the start of the year so these guys they, they, they more or less they changed every six months I would say um, one of the things I might do just until I get my filters because I'm going to actually start to order all this stuff in bulk because I'm sick guys of you know just running out of filters and stuff all the time I'm going to actually order them in bulk maybe like five packs of uh, uh, sediment filters or something you know what I mean order them in bulk so it's just easier if I need to replace if I can see something climbing or reading climbing I could just change them but guys this was an old tip that someone gave me a long long time ago and I never used it right but for all it takes to do it right and for all the good it might or or for all the heartache I should say that it might save you I think it might be worth doing again and that is this adding a few drops of prime to your reverse osmosis water while, while you're aging it let me see I think I have a whole bottle over here somewhere oh maybe I do yet now this is a full bottle here right so this is going to be dripped back into this uh, these containers up here, I mean drip back and I'm going to put in a, probably a couple of drips every single time I, I fill up these things up here just 
to, you know, doubly check, doubly make sure. Remember I said it was going to cut and come back, I don't think it will. One of the things we've got to do, guys, is we've got to feed this a little wasey. Let me see. Where are you, Sulawesi? These guys are so shy. I've never been able to get them to come out properly. See them all over here. You see them in the gravel? They're so, so shy. I'm going to give them a bit of shrimp dinner because... Where did I put this? Oh, by the way, I have another box here because... I'm actually going to do the giveaways with other branded foods as well. Not just my own. Just to show I'm not biased. Um, when it comes to showing you stuff, right? So if something I show you, if I'm very, very honest with my, like, reviews and whatnot, um, you will see for yourself in the, in the time that I do things that if something works or, or not. Let's put this in here. This is another bit of shrimp dinner. I'm just going to put it right in the side here. But we can't judge it with the Sulawesi because they are very, very, very shy it'll be an hour and then they might be at the front here all right so just off the bar shrimp dinner any good i would say yes sir shrimp seem to go for it anyway yep they went for it here as well i didn't put any food in this time our girl is buried so i'm being very 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 careful with my feeding here. This is the Galaxy fishbone that has, uh, she's buried basically, so she has German spotted head pinto genetics in her babies. We're going to try and make some Galaxy bowl. These guys seem to like it too. Get them up here. Yeah, this, is, this seems to be a quite nice food. Let me see. I think I fed these guys yesterday, so <laughs> these are my little rillies that I made myself. You can see the the Santa Super Crystal Red. Well, it's not te not technically a Santa because it has two white dots on, on the thing. On the tail. <laughs> yeah, some shrimp seem to really dig this food actually. Look, I'm going to actually show you from a different angle as well because I'm always aware, guys, that I show you from a way up here like this. I should be showing you like this, shouldn't I? Maybe just back a little bit. I think 10 centimeters is probably the good way to show you here. Let's have a little look at our pintos. Oh, they, they love this. Look at that glare. That's one big mama there. Look at her. Little babies in the in weed. I was doing a little side project here, guys, in this tank, but I didn't. I didn't plan on filming. I just wanted to see. Pothos. We've all used it in tanks before, and I'm using this little uh, plastic acrylic clip thing that has a hole in it. To put the pothos through, and you can see here that the pothos have, has been in here maybe what two or three weeks for the length of its roots. And the reason I'm using it, guys, is I wanted to see if. Uh, it would reduce string algae in a tank and so far I'm s I would think um, yes so far I mean I can see this big clump here is getting less and less a little bit of string algae in the middle but the moss is doing well as well here so is the sawasa tang yeah it's looking good look at the little babies there it's that little black one there see it? I don't know what that is let's have a little look at our Favourites, how are you doing there, Galaxies? Wunderbra, I think you say in German. Wunderbra. Let's see, how is our freaking Kongs? God, I badly need to fix stuff with the glare in this room. Yeah, so that is actually one of the projects. I think I'll try and do um, is fix the glare on the lights into the tanks right and this is what I mean here. I actually started to do it the other day. Look at the amount of light spill that we have here. Right, so I'm going to get uh, some lengths of wood. I'm going to go to the hardware store probably next week. And guys, I'm going to encase these lights. All of the lights that I have here, I'm going to build 
um, like a box shaped thing to put the actual light in. I'm actually going to spray the inside pure white as well. Maybe I actually use paint um, over a spray. Spray paint it seems to be a very inefficient way of actually painting stuff like you go through a lot of it. So we might get some paint. I paint the insides white, paint the outsides black, and then the light will be boxed in. And then all this extra glare that you see all around the tanks. But it is bad in the rooms. The, the glare is everywhere. Like you see it all over the walls and stuff. We need to direct the light to the ground. Right, so that is one of the projects I'm going to do for next week. Like here as well, you can see it. All the glare you see on this side here is from this set of lights here. You see it? Can't tell if you can see because I'm not looking properly. You can see all the light glare up here as well. And I tried to, I did try and remedy it with the black plastic. But the problem with the black plastic is it doesn't stop all the light glare. Some of the black plastic, so um, I really should encase the actual light itself and make sure the only light that gets out is going directly to the tanks underneath. So we will be boxing in the lights. And the reason I'm trying it like this guys is probably because a lot of them will be boxed in and just sat on top of the tanks. You dig? Like this one as well. I know this is uh, the Aqua L one, Aqua L LED. But it has a lot of light glare as well from the sides because you see it. You can actually see through the light. Okay, so that was something that I didn't like with the Aqua L. But you see the difference. But they do... I make these in black as well. So that is one of the things that we're going to do is uh, we're going to make some light covers, proper light covers. Let's have a little look at this test because it's been more than five minutes. Let me see it's blue. Right, so the nitrate is low. Let's get this uh, lid back on here before the food goes bad. Good luck with that, Mark. Let's say try another test. Do we have enough? Test? Let me see nitrate. Nitrate. Yeah, we do. We have nitrate test kits here as well. So we're going to test nitrates. I want to see if um, if we're dosing too much nitrate. Because that's one thing I never really test is uh, nitrate levels. I always just go by the manufacturers. I recommend dosing with stuff. Because I think, guys, that you can get very, very obsessed with this kind of thing. Tests. I think I talked about that in my last video. You can. You can get very, very, very obsessed with doing this kind of thing. Right? And it's not the it's not the way I want to go. But it's, if you have a target where you think you might have a slight problem, yeah, then go ahead and use your tests. Fill up, mother effer. Almost a wee bit more. Well, of course it went over. Of course. There you go. Perfecto. Perfecto. Inspector gadget. Yeah, we rinsed that as well, didn't we? Right, so we're looking for our uh, nitrate. We did nitrate. Salt water, nitrate, fresh water. Where's the nitrate car? I lost it. God damn it. We can do the test, guys, and then I'll look up, look up the color chart online. I don't know what I've done with the nitrate. Nitrate there. No, that's salt water nitrate, though. Hmm. I don't think we can use this. We'll see. If it measures anything, we'll still be able to see it. So let me see nitrate bottle one, bottle two. This is ten drops of each, right? So let's get this shaken up. Yeah, I wonder what I've done with the card for this. Nitrate, nitrate, ammonia, fresh water, ammonia. I'm just double checking because sometimes I uh, like I can't see the can't see the forest for the trees kind of thing because I'm a bit of a dummy. Damas. <laughs> so I'm paying a little bit more attention to my cherries guys, you probably would have noticed. How are we doing there pandas? 
This tank got a nice little cull the other day. I only took out about five shrimp in this tank. But we have more pandas. Um, once they start to breed a little bit more, we'll be a little bit more specific with the pandas, right? Because this one here is not your atypical panda, you see? It doesn't have the pure white stripe or blue stripe all the way around the middle, like you see these ones. Well, these girls are really orange. Hello, German spotted pintles. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually annoyed that I've uh, misplaced that card. It pro it's probably in my shrimp room somewhere. Let me see, guys. I'm just going to aim you down a little bit without turning the camera off. Prime it the way. What one was first here? Ten. Ten, it says. Ten drops. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm doing this, guys, as well. If I if I drip one too many or make a mistake somewhere, I'll, I'll redo the test. I redo it. Nitrate. Nitrate. Oh, you know what I'm saying, guys. I, I like. I'm at that age now where I'm second. Guessing absolutely everything I do. So this what was this ten as well? Oh. My dummy. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's get our lids back on. Right, let's give this a wee doors double air. We shake it here. I'm gonna put it just next to the salt water one right now. If there's nitrate in it, it will it will change colour as well still. But I will double check, I'll actually go and Google it on on uh, Google and I'll be able to see the colour chart and, and see that's what you do if you lose these test kits you can if you have a good colour printer as well, you can uh, go and uh, just print it off. Right guys, let's have a little look at some of these tanks because, uh, yeah, I just want to check, check some things. How did it go? You see what I mean with the silhouette, right? We put food in, where did it go, the food? I can't even see it, I'm pretty sure it dropped here somewhere. I can see the silhouette are starting to come to it, but they're not all over it. Ope seem to really dig it. Guys, I can't remember, did I even put any food in this tank? I don't think I did, did I? Good. Good. Yeah, I don't think I put any food in this tank. Let's uh, grab another bit. You see what I mean? My memory is like uh, gone in my little peanut brain. We have one bit of food here. Let's get into this tank. Um, this tank might not be the best judge either because it actually has a lot of blue dreams. You see them all over the place. But I actually quite heavily feed this tank because we have big snails in it. So it might not be the best tank to ever do a test in like this. But we'll come back in a second. Green jays are still not bazillions, but they're definitely better than they were. Definitely better. Um, yeah. I would say, is shrimp dinner a good food yet? I'm going to quickly look at the label and see if there's English on it and we can, I'll, I'll see what is actually in it. Wait a minute, should I smell it? I always like to smell the food as well. I used to do a taste test, but... Hmm. It doesn't smell of anything fishy at all. Before I would say that was... Uh, a bad thing if you bought shrimp food and it smelt a little bit fishy and stuff. But I actually make my own food with shrimp meal. God, this is going to be tough. Yeah, I can't even read it. The writing is like mega tiny, you probably see here. Yeah, I can't read it. 
Even if I had my reading glasses on. Oh, they're here actually, my reading glasses. Let me see. Is this my reading glasses? It is. And my reading glasses are like the bottom ends of uh, bottles. You see how thick the lens is? This is how thick I need to be able to read stuff nowadays. And so when I look at stuff now, like the camera, everything, like the lens, everything, um, all the writing on the camera is like mega in focus. Right? But the rest of the front room is a complete blur. Let's have a little look. Can I read this? I can. Shrimp dinner is German. Complete food for shrimp. Shrimp dinner is a well balanced daily main food for your ornamental shrimp containing all the important nutrients with substances and natural vitamins. The need for a healthy development, successful molts, growth. Brilliant colours and high reproductive rates. Our special recipe and the way we manufacture our shrimp foods guarantee that your shrimp still find this food tasty even after some time in the war. It is thus a complete. It is thus completely eaten. What? Uh, some of the some of the translations when you get shrimp food and stuff to like English is just like rubbish. The ingredients of shrimp dinner are 100% natural. Let's see: algae, spirulina, chlorella, kelp, spinach, mollusks, and crustaceans. Protein extracts of vegetable origin. Uh, cereals, minerals, sting and nettle, walnut, yeast, extra, yeast extract maybe, herbs, fennel. That's, I think that's the smell that I could smell in the food that I wasn't sure what it was, is the fennel, actually. Fennel. It's interesting that they say um, plant proteins, but then they have uh, uh, crustaceans and stuff in it. Let me see. Oh, let me see. Uh, I'm looking at the German one again. I just want to double check that there. It says um, protein extracts from vegetables, but then that's kind of negated when you're using mollusks and crustaceans. You're still using animal proteins. Uh, but it's, of course, it's not just for the protein though, with animal stuff, it's for lipids and all that kind of stuff. Mussels have uh, g uh, lipids and things in them, stuff that shrimp need to live. Um, I'm actually quite a big believer in having uh, plant protein in your food because the way I see it guys is, I think shrimp in nature, I know a lot of these shrimp, like these for example, these haven't been natural for generations and generations, right? The, their grandparents were uh, crystal reds <laughs> or tiger like 30 years ago or something right so they're a long way from being natural uh, but the, the, the way that they are built like the way that their bodies are the way that they feed they're still designed to eat stuff like they would normally do in nature and so uh, these guys probably would graze off all the biofilm in a tank a plant matter the cane matter you will have insect protein, stuff that falls in off trees, flies, crickets, all that kind of good stuff, but the majority of them will be uh, plant proteins from the biofilm, or, or you guys you know what, like decaying plant uh, material will be producing. Oh God, I can't see. Is it is it obvious in camera that I can't see? I change my glasses back to my other ones. The other ones are actually my driving glasses because they, they allow me to see almost normally. Like I can see the whole room normally now. But when I look at you guys in the camera, I can't see the camera. Can't win. I can see the camera is there obviously, but I can't read any of the writing. I can't read the GoPro sign. It's a pain in the butthole. And then of course when I go to look at the shrimp from here, the shrimp are in focus. I go to here, shrimp are out of focus. I cannot win. It's a pain in the ass. I have like three different sets of glasses for three different sets of things. 
uh, it is what it is. All right, let us see. Let us see here. Look at this. This leaf that you see in here, guys, is a big yellow leaf. It was actually green yesterday. It's full of holes. This is actually a kale leaf. Kale. Now we're going to have to do something about these uh, filters in here because this one I noticed in the top right there. Now if that goes down any further, there will be a hole there and uh, little trumpets and stuff will get pulled straight into that filter. Big boy. Uh, we need to fix that today. But I don't think I'll bore you with guys with that because uh, we actually did that in the, the last video. I think guys as well, we might also change it from the box standard into the Mark Trim Frame stuff because um, I can see by the analytics again, <laughs> you guys love the first couple of videos but not so much the second one. So whatever we do in the video, I'll actually use that as a title. So today was uh, shrimp feedings, of glass gardens, uh, shrimp dinner tabs I think they're called. The shrimp dinner is actually what it's called. And guys, I think um, we'll do giveaways and stuff like that of the stuff that I show you in these videos in my live stream right so if you're new to the channel then please do subscribe uh, watch out for my live streams because I give away lots and lots of shrimp food and I have a lot of other stuff up on my shelf up there from other manufacturers that I also will be giving away right so guys hope you enjoyed today's show have an awesome week and I'll catch you in the next one happy shrimp game